piece. It is 11 11. Oh my gosh. Whoever got the notification, um, whoever is here right now, this is for you. Or whoever hears this in the future, know that this is uh, for you. Um, I literally um, had a, a few conversations with a few people today, uh, talking to them about some things. And um, everything went well, like more than expected. And um, I was going through my nighttime routine, um, going to sleep a little later than I expected. And as I laid down, I literally um, had, uh, what did you call it? I don't know the proper name, excuse me, y'all. <laughs> but um, movements. So... Uh, my body was moving in a way like uh, um, like ch I call it like channels movements, okay. And I was making these motions of waves. Uh, if you could see me, you would see that I'm doing like like I'm ushering in ushering in something. Like, but it was like waves, you know. So my arm is like moving in big movements, and. Um, literally uncontrolled movements and I was like well what is this and so I'm hearing like waves and then I was thinking of some um, older teachers who have transitioned now and their teachings and how they taught and um, just thinking of what's happening now and so I asked, like, what? What is that about? And so it reminds me of something that uh, Dolores Cannon spoke about, but not exactly. She spoke about something that was like, okay, but this is a little different. And so um, what was uh, presented to me is a few things and something that I want to sh share with you more specifically, but the groups of us that come through here. And so let me backtrack. I wasn't going to say this, but I just felt prompted to say this. I was talking to one of my inner circle classes last week. Alchemy circle It's alchemy circle. And, um, one of the students, Eric, uh, made made a. He mentioned. Um, I believe he made mention of something that I said that was in alignment with a teaching, uh, the movement of people within Africa, essentially, and Hebrew Israelites, and um, and so it made. I brought up some historical facts about movements of certain types of people throughout all of history. And I don't want to get too deep into that. But all of that, even as I'm speaking to you now, all of that is coming to me. They have always, listen to me, in every civilization there have always been a group of people that were the magicians, the shamans, the healers. They were one and the same. They weren't separate. They were just in every village, city, town. You knew where to go to the, and again, whatever, however you want to label it, doing air quotes, the shamans, the healers, the magicians, okay? And every civilization had them. And I don't want to go too deep into where they came from, where they disappeared to, etc. But what happened to tonight is that what I was receiving about the ones in our near past, right? So we're talking about an older generation. Um 
if they were alive now, they would be like 190. So we're talking about that past generation, okay? Or like 120. So, um, and again, these were those who were born like in the 1900s, late 1800s, 1900s. Wasn't that many of them. But what I received is that they, they primed the ground. There was a group before them that primed the way for them. That these groups kept like preparing energetically for the following group. And they understood that not in the beginning of their work, but towards the end of their work. That my work is for the next generation of these beings that are the, the healers, the magicians, the shamans. This is not for the whole world. It's always a group, okay? There was an understanding that the work that they were supposed to do was so unique. And it was a piece of the next group, a piece of what the next group would need, what the next group require, would require. It wasn't all of it. And there were several that provided pieces, okay? So here's what I'm saying to you now. So I gave you that um, information because I want to share this particular message with you right now. I know for a fact that many of you are in an energy of being overwhelmed. I know for a fact your nervous systems are overwhelmed. One of the reasons why I said last month, the end of the year, since I think October, rest, don't do a lot. Because I knew that come January, your nervous systems would be overwhelmed. So much so where you find it hard to settle. And because energetically, the world is saying, it's a new year to something new. Even though you understand, many of you understand, well, this is really not the new year. It really is in March. This is the middle of the winter. It doesn't matter. You're still affected energetically. And as m much as we know that we're spiritual beings, you are not yet at that place where you can 100% deflect what's happening around you in the world. And if you say you are, you're not a spiritual being or you're a liar because you're not supposed to deflect 100%. You're supposed to alchemize it. You're supposed to know what to do with this energy and create something new with it, okay? So, I know you are feeling overwhelmed and I know that the things that you've been learning to do is like this stuff is not working. What then happens is you start to doubt who you are as a spiritual being. You start to question yourself. You start to beat yourself up. I'm not where I should be. This is happening because I haven't been meditating. Maybe I'm not that strong of a being. Maybe I shouldn't do that work. I'm really not ready. How can I help heal people if I'm not healed? You start going into this place of spiritual chaos. And, because, and I'm saying chaos because it feels like chaos within you. You feel chaotic. You can't give up. You don't know what next step to take. 
is confusion. You're meditating, you're hearing one thing, and you're thinking it's something else. So it's like, what's wrong with me? Then you go into the place of, am I making the right, am I doing the right thing? Am I making the right move? Am I, am I making mistakes? Let me tell you this, and I promise this to you 100%. I'm speaking to you, soul family. Everyone that can hear my voice now and in the future, listen to me when I say this to you. It is 100% the truth because I know it is 100% the truth. You cannot make mistakes. There is no such thing as mistakes on the spiritual path. There, is, there are no mistakes on this spiritual path. You have done the work so many lifetimes. It's within you. I always tell my students, look, I'm not here to teach you anything new. I'm here to jog your memory. You already know this stuff. You're masters. I'm just here to remind you. I'm here to pull it out from you. There are no mistakes. Well, how can you say that? You know when you hear people say, if you could do it all over again, would you? (laughs) And the people that have reached certain levels of success in their spirituality say yes. This is something that I ask myself periodically because it's like when I think about some things, I'm like, oh, my gosh, would I really want to go through that again? And spirit will remind me, yes, because remember when you were able to help this person because you knew how to get through that? Every mistake If you can think about all the things that you thought were mistakes. They have created the person that you are now. That is working towards the person who that you are to become. So if I know that, if I know that, if I know that. Whatever decision I do, whatever step I make, I cannot make a mistake. It's not the wrong thing, right? It allows me to be free to follow any prompting that I receive. Because it will never be wrong. What do I tell you? You can't make a mistake. There's only two ways. The easy way or the hard way. Both ways are going to get you to where you need to be. (laughs) Both ways are going to get you to where you need to be. There's a sacred. I heard I was going to say another word and I heard sacred. There is a sacred blueprint that is your life. That lifetime after lifetime. You have been working towards. And there are literally, literally, some of you have, it's not just, oh, I have 10 spirit guides on my team. It's five people, thousands watching you, sending you information and energy through codes, through numbers, through everything to guide you in this lifetime to get to where you are are supposed to be. Where is that place? This is your mission. As spiritual beings, we have a mission. I call it the soul mission. Your soul's mission. You cannot make mistakes on the spiritual path. You cannot make mistakes towards the soul mission. I say do it the easy way or the hard way. 
The easy way is by getting guidance, by following that guidance, both physical and spiritual. The hard way is not getting the guidance, doing it on your own, not following your your spiritual promptings. You're going to get to the same place, but because you're not getting the guidance, because you're not open to it, you're going to have to learn the lessons that say, look, at what point are you going to follow these promptings? At what point are you going to get assistance? You will. You will. Eventually, you will. You just delay it a little bit. But in that delayment, you are learning. You are healing. Do you understand me? There are no mistakes. You can't mess this up. You cannot mess this up, y'all. So when you, you're beating yourselves up, when you're stressing about stuff, literally your spirit team is like, what is happening? <laughs> As you're being observed, because all of you are being observed. It is not that deep in this reality. When you get so heavy in this reality, listen, it pulls you from your spirituality. When you are so concerned about what is happening in this world, oh my goodness, y'all, it pulls you away from you as a spiritual being. What are you really stressed out about? What are you really stressed out about? Right now, everyone, if you are stressed or worried about something, say it out loud. I'm stressed out about this. I'm worried about this. So think it in your head. I can't hear you. Nobody on here can hear you. And I want you to take a moment and think in the grand scheme of things, what does that mean? Well, Melanie, you don't understand. Right now, I don't have a job. I don't have money. This is where guidance comes in. I don't know how many times I have to say that you are abundance. You are abundance. Abundance is within you. And you're worried about what's outside of you. Instead of saying, let me go meditate. Let me get quiet. Let me get still. What can I create? Is there a service that I can give someone? There's something that I can do that comes from me. And then when you're told that thing, you follow through. When I tell people this and they actually implement it, they actually do it. I get the messages. I get the DMs. I I get all the messages that say, oh, shoot, this really works. And I'm not saying it. I'm not saying What I'm saying to you is this, don't be half ass with it. I was telling someone today, don't be like, oh, let me think. I'm I'm thinking positive, thinking positive. That means nothing. Those words mean nothing. You don't feel it. You don't feel positive. Your energy is saying I'm in doubt. So I don't care what your words are saying. It's the same thing. Oh, I tried that. I tried that. I I still don't have the money. I still don't have the whatever. It's not possible, y'all. It may take some time. It may not come immediately. This year, it'll come immediately, most likely. But it may take some time. Whatever you are here to do is not outside of you. As spiritual beings, it's not something that someone else does. So no one else can tell you 
This is how you do it. What I'm telling you is how you do it is connect to you and create. Let whatever that's within you manifest outside of you. You can't mess it up, y'all. You cannot mess it up. There's a, a quote that I, I, I think I heard it 20, maybe 15 years ago. And I printed it out and I would look at it all the time. And it's one of my favorite, uh, I don't know who, who said it, but the quote is, begin to weave and God will give you the thread. So many of us say, I don't have the thread, so I can't do it. Did you hear me? Begin to weave and God will give you the thread. The reason why it's not working so many times is because you're like, I don't have what it takes physically, spiritually, or emotionally. I don't have what it takes emotionally. I'm crying myself. Spirit says, go on, go on live and, and talk to people. But I'm crying myself right now. Go on live right now. But let me get myself together because I can't tell people how to, you know, I can't tell people about relationships if my relationship is messed up and I'm crying to pieces. And Spirit is saying, do it now. Because maybe there's someone on there that was going through that and they're like, this person's relatable. And maybe she can help me. Does she teach about this? Can she counsel? How can you help me? But you don't know because of the self-doubt and because I'm not ready. And because I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to say the wrong thing. But what if you say the right thing? to the right person at the right time. Well, Professor Melanie, I'm homeless right now. You don't know how it is. How can I tell people, talk about abundance And, you know, tell people, you know, follow your promptings if I'm homeless. I live in a car or I'm in a shelter. I don't have my own home. Spirit is telling me to, you know, maybe Spirit is telling, you know, me to be in real estate, help people get homes. And I don't even have my own home. So I'm not going to do it. Maybe that's the key. Maybe you are supposed to be homeless so you can help people to get a home because you genuinely understand what it feels like to not have a home. And who are you not to do that work because of where you are? I understand what it's like to not have your own home. Y'all remember the old videos from 2019? With the the blue mandala in the background. I was in my parents' attic. No heat, no AC. In the attic. And I'm talking about follow your promptings, abundance, and all these things. No one cares about that. The message is what was important. The truth is what resonated. I need y'all to take a beat, take a breath, take a moment. Whatever you're stressing about, I promise you it's not that deep. I promise you. I said, Last week, was it last week or two weeks ago, I said, you are 
the embodiment of abundance. Abundance is all around you. I promise I promise you, abundance is all around you. But because you are so stuck in what is not, what that bank account says, what this bill is saying, what my situation is saying, you can't see it. You cannot see it. You have two options. Take a moment. Step out of that. Because you being stressed about the bills and the whatever and the account saying negative, is, your stress is not going to cause it to be positive. You crying out to God, God, please, if you could just do this. That's not how it works. <laughs> your energy is saying, I don't have. Your spirit team is saying, oh, they must like the I don't have energy. Let's give them more of this I don't have. So whether you take a moment to step out and be like, I'm really an ancient being. I'm older than the Verizon company and this Verizon bill. Real talk. I'm really an ancient being. I existed before Bank of America existed. I'm really a spiritual being. I'm really abundance. So what can I do legally (laughs) to tap into that? And maybe... You say, I've meditated and I, I try and I, it's nothing is working. Okay, then you're in a place of resistance and that's okay. Sometimes we're in such, we're in it so deep, we're just in resistance. We just can't see it. We're fighting it so heavily. Then here's the other option. You go find your soul family member. You go find that person that you can be accountable to, you know they're accountable to you, your category three person. You go five, you're an essay, you find a classmate, find someone and, and express this to them. Someone that you know, you know that they are here for your best as you are there for their best. And see if they can't find the abundance around you. I spoke to somebody today that was in, in, a, in a position, like everything, everything seemed to, even I was like, wow, like this is really, this is, wow, this looks really bad. But I maintained like there's abundance around. What can we do? Wait a minute. Do you remember two years ago I told you to do something? Go go check it right now. They checked it. And when they, they followed through, because here's the thing, they f- followed through. They trusted me when I said do something specifically. They said, okay, Melanie, I trust you. Okay. They did it. They forgot that they did it. I had to remind them. I had to remind them. And when I reminded them, they went from zero money in five minutes to realizing they had thousands of dollars accessible to them. Why? Because they tapped into one of their category three people. They tapped into one of the people that I'm here to help you expand. I'm not here to cripple you. I'm not here to say, here's the money. I'm here for you to see your own abundance. You don't even know you're walking around with this abundance for the past, I don't know how many months you've been going through this. Sometimes you just got to look around, y'all. And if you say, I don't have people like that around me, then you better get people like that around you, especially this year. 
I told my daughter today, I don't want to hear nothing at all that is negative, low vibrational. I don't hear none of that. We're not going to speak none of that. Like, I'm cutting it off. You don't get to speak like that. You better speak all the positive into your cells. Speak exactly what you want. If you have to look crazy and talk to yourself, do that. I shoot, I I do it. <laughs> gas yourself up. I told y'all that. If you have to gas yourself up, if you have to be like, oh no, I'm not doing this today. Isla, I see your name. No, I, I'm not doing this today. Isla, you don't know who you are. You are a powerful spiritual being. If you got to do that, then you do that. And watch what happens, y'all. This is not woo-woo spirituality. If you know me, you know me. Everything I'm saying is backed up by science. Everything I'm saying to you, I can back it up. I have the receipts. (laughs) I can back it up with people. I'm just not going to sit here and name all the people. So... I'm telling you all, you good. You are good. You are perfect. You are perfect. You are perfect. Everything about you is perfection. Everything about you is perfection. Everything about you is perfection. And you were perfectly made, perfectly, to be here at this time to do the work that you are here to do. Everything that has happened in your past happened perfectly. It's perfect. There are no mistakes, y'all. You didn't make a mistake then, which means you can't make a mistake now, which means you will not make a mistake in the future. And I need y'all to understand that. Stop being so hard on yourself. If you can even think about the one person that you helped. Think about the one person. As spiritual beings, we we love helping people, healing people. Just go to the one. I was telling Natea, who does who's a customer support manager at Ascensions by Zoe, someone emailed and it was a horrible email. And I said, Do you know how many times I hear people saying how wonderful you are, how amazing you are, how many emails I get, messages I get, even the reviews. People like the products, but they say the customer service is amazing. I said, print them out, put them on the wall in your office. Think about all the people that you have helped, all the people that you have healed, and if You can't think about all, think of the one. All spiritual beings, all have healed, helped, guided, taught at least one person. And think that if I didn't make all the air quote mistakes in my life, I wouldn't have been able to help them. Therefore, those mistakes were worth it. That bad relationship was worth it. That abusive childhood was worth it. That teacher telling me, you know, I was not smart enough was worth it. Me losing my job was worth it. Me being a single parent is worth it. Me, me not having money is worth it. Me being on welfare is worth it. Me being 
Maybe you were mean. Me being a mean person was worth it. All those things. Me being homeless was worth it. Fill in the blank. Right now, I want everyone to fill in the blank. Whatever you think was a mistake that you made in your past, say it. Me, dot, 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 was worth it. I give y'all 10 seconds. And I want you to finish that sentence. Because I can help someone dot, 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 dot. I'll give you an example. One of the things that I was talking to um, someone about last week was me being divorced. And I literally had a close friend of mine, less than 12 inches from my face, said, the devil is using you. You're being used by the devil. You are wicked. And I forgot about that until I was telling the person. So I thought, there was many times I thought, was me getting divorced a mistake? Was that a mistake? Was me leaving a marriage that was physically draining me to the point of my body breaking down, was that a mistake? So my sentence is, me leaving a marriage was not a mistake because I can help that woman or that man that is in a relationship that is not in aligned with them. I can help guide them to a place that is in aligned with them. I can tell them that follow whatever spiritual prompting you're getting because Maybe the person that you're supposed to be with in the future is there waiting for you, okay? Whatever that sentence is, I want you to create that, those sentences. And every time that you get to a place where you feel like, I made a mistake, I, I'm a failure, I failed at this, I want you to create those sentences, And if you feel like right now you're in a place and you're feeling like failure, you're feeling like mistake, whatever you're feeling, take a moment, take a breath, take a breather, okay? Stop beating yourself up. Look at it from your spiritual eyes. Look at it from your spiritual eyes. Damn, I shouldn't have given this money or invested in this thing. Look at it from your spiritual eyes. You don't know what that action is going to lead to. Okay? As you're giving yourself some grace, being gratitude. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that those things happened. Oh my, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I used to be so bad because I did something that triggered me, uh, to have severe hypothyroidism. I wasn't I was eating something that triggered it. 
for years. And so then I had a daughter who had autoimmune with that. Oh, man. I had two daughters with it. One was way worse than the other. But, man, if I'm not grateful that 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 sickness was there, that sickness happened, because guess what I got to do? I got to practice and tap into healing, and I got to heal all of us. So I used to beat myself up like, you're not a good mother. Like you should have done better. You should have, you know, you should have known this better. You could have caught this when she was younger. It, it went too far. <laughs> but damn, I was able to heal myself, my oldest daughter, and my second daughter is still alive. When they thought she would not be alive. Y'all feeling me? Y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm sharing this because I want you to look at your own lives. So with that said, remember... If nothing else, (laughs) I said a lot. You know your spiritual being. You're on your path. Everything that you're doing is perfectly perfect. All the mistakes that you made weren't mistakes. There's no mistakes. Just continue to do your work. Continue to seek guidance. Continue to follow your promptings. And be in gratitude, be in gratitude, be in gratitude of all the mistakes, of all the the situations that you're in right now that you think are so dire. Be in gratitude. That is the fastest way to raise your vibration. So with that said, um, I hope this message resonated with you. I know that I know that I know that I know it was for those many of you who were on tonight. I know this was for you. And so from my heart, I love you so family. Have a wonderful night. Get some sleep. It's not that deep, (laughs) y'all. I promise you. All right. Love you so family. Good night.